Right. So today uh, we are looking at the last um, last chapter. Uh, we started with the last chapter, last class, um, looking at um, stewardship and also some practical guidelines. Um, so that is what we are looking at: some practical guide guidelines to how to steward um, our finances or the finances that God puts into our hands. Right. So that's what we're looking at. Okay, so why don't we why don't we pray and then get started, right? Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. For this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. We thank you that every new day is a gift from you, Father God. We thank you for the promise of uh, your presence in every new day, in every minute of every day, God. And Lord, we thank you that your word says that you're the one who daily loads us with good things, daily loads us with benefits, oh Father God. Yes, Master, we thank you for your presence, the blessing of your presence. We thank you for the blessing of your word. We thank you for the blessing of your Holy Spirit, Lord, leading us, guiding us. And Lord, we thank you for the richness of the wisdom that we find in your word, Lord. Father, we thank you for the precepts, the principles that are there in your word, Master. Yes, Lord, we give you all the praise even today, Father God. And Lord, we pray that you would write your word upon our hearts, Lord. The things that we have been learning and we are about to learn, Father God, I pray would be, would um, Lord, stay in our hearts, Father God, and uh, Lord, direct our lives, Father God. Yes, Master, Spirit of God, we pray that you would quicken, that you would cause us to remember these things that we are sowing to the spirit we thank you we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in jesus matchless name we pray amen okay um so i'm just sharing the screen Okay, so we looked at the third topic in the last chapter, which is basic guidelines. Okay, basic guidelines. So what is a guideline? Guideline is like a map. Okay, so some, these are, these are not laws, but these are guidelines. Okay, so what is the difference? A law or a command, you have to do. You have to do it. If you break that, there are consequences. If you break that, you're saying that, okay, I'm not obeying the law. Whereas a guideline is more like a suggestion. Okay, here is something that you can do. Okay, here is something that is good for you. Well, if you do it, well, it's good. But if you think, okay, right now, you know, I don't want to do it. And uh, there are alternatives to do it. That is also fine. So this is basically guidelines which will help us. Okay, the first thing that we saw... Uh, I think we are in, which page are we in? Um, okay, page 29 in the notes, right? So the first thing that we saw is that we need to spend less than what we earn. No, that's a basic, basic um, criteria. No, it's logical. We need to spend less than we earn. So what will that, uh, what that will, you know, what will that result in? One, we are living within the means within whatever money that we are getting, right? We're not spending more. We are not, uh, you know, we don't want to please others by spending. We are living within what we are getting. Now, is that easy or difficult? Sometimes it's difficult, right? Because the needs could be more, right? The requirement could be more. So living within what we can earn is sometimes challenging, but that is why we need to discipline ourselves and live like that, okay? Um, second one that we see is to avoid the use of debt. Okay? So Proverbs 22 and verse 7 says, The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Okay? So when we say debt, okay, um, we, let's say we borrow something. When we borrow something, what does that mean? We need to, we need to pay back. Right? With that understanding only we are taking. Suppose you take a loan from the bank. Why is the bank giving you the loan? First, they're going to charge some interest. But they give you with the understanding that you will pay them back. Right? If you're taking 1,000 rupees, then they might charge you 1,000, you know, whatever, 1,100 
or something like that as with the interest but the understanding is that you would pay them back okay so now we've taken the loan and we need to pay back and let's say you know there are other other needs which come up other requirements which come up we have used the money now monthly we are not able to pay back that is a challenge. We're not able to pay back because when you're paying back, you're paying back more. Not the same amount that you took, but you took it in faith saying that, okay, I will be able to earn, I will be able to pay back. But if you're not able to pay back, then that is a challenge. Okay? And uh, I just want to caution us today about you know, how very easy they have made it to get loans, right? With very high interest, okay? Uh, and if you default a payment, which means you're not paying back on time a particular payment, the interest doubles, right? And now they have so many apps, right? You just if if you've not you know if you if you've not defaulted on any any payment earlier, or if you just have you know uh, if you give them even a rental agreement that you're paying staying in one place for two two years, any kind of ID. You know, they, they just immediately give the loan. It just comes to your account, right? And then, if you're not able to pay back, these are not nice people, right? These are not nice people. They're going to create all kinds of difficulty, right? And uh, sometimes they take law into their own hands. So we need to avoid the use of debt as far as possible. Avoid borrowing. Avoid taking like in some cases, like we know I I need to take, you know, maybe you're building a house, maybe buying a vehicle, and you don't have that much money with you on hand immediately, right? So you're saying, okay, I'll let me let me take a loan and I'll pay back, or maybe you know, it could be in business, whatever, which is fine. Right. So the thing is, when we why do we say avoid? Avoiding is okay as far as possible. Do not, right? Because it's going to be difficult, challenging. Because till you pay back, you have that is on your mind. It is going to restrict your your life. Okay. So so that's the thing. Okay? Avoid the use of debt. The third thing is to build liquidity. The liquidity meaning, uh, what does it mean? It means that the ability to use the money that we have okay sometimes or immediately you know sometimes we we are not able to use the money okay what will be that situation you know maybe the 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 wealth that we have is in some form of jewelry right maybe the you know it is there in some safe de safe deposit locker is in the form of jewelry the wealth that you have could be in the form of a land right Maybe in the house, maybe you've rented a house, or you're giving it on rent. Now you're getting an income out of it. So immediately, if you need money, you're not able to use that. That house could be worth maybe whatever, 50 lakhs, one crore. That house could be worth that. But unless you sell, get the money, we're not able to use that. Right? Um, same with like uh, if it's jewelry, if it's anything. Um, so all our asset, asset meaning all the things that we own, which is of value, that's an asset, right? You could be having like simple things like a watch or a phone or a laptop. These are all assets, right? But you can't, this, this is of value, some value, but you can't use that money immediately. So that is why, you know, uh, the adv advice normally given the guideline is to build liquidity, you know, build or save um, you know, and build liquidity, build ability to to be able to spend money immediately. Maybe there's an urgent need. Maybe there is some help that you want to, you know, maybe in your own family or someone else, or or maybe you know, even for our own needs, you know, like fees, maybe um, whatever. Thing is to build that ability to use that money immediately, right? Okay. Then the third one. That we see, okay, we can we can just look at that verse. You know, um, it talks about uh, 
you know, it's a very strong verse, right? Go to the ant, you sluggard. You sluggard means you lazy person. Consider her ways, Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 8. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Okay. Now, why does it do that? So that in the when the season changes, okay, it's doing in the what what is it doing? The ant is collecting in summer, it's collecting during harvest time when it's available, so that when the season changes from summer to maybe winter, when there is scarcity of food, it can actually use this. Right? So that is the so the writer of Proverbs is exhorting, you know, go to the ant, consider her ways, learn, learn from this. Okay. So Building liquidity is one such thing. We we learn from it and we uh, apply it. Okay. Then the next one that we see is to set long-term goals. Okay. What do we mean by that? Long-term goals, right? Um, when we set long-term goals, our way of living changes. Our pattern of living changes. You know, you're saying, okay, um, I'm you know at the end of two years, I'm going to such and such a place. You're planning. And so accordingly, your finances or the way you spend your money also changes because of that. Okay, so you're saying, I'm not going to spend it now, but I'm going to use it two years down the line so that I can actually go to this place or I can you I can maybe you know go to some college or study there. So I'm going to use this money for that. Right. So you're setting long-term goals. Long-term goals can also be you know, I'm going to maybe build something, buy something um, for myself or for my family. This is a long-term goal. Okay, so you're setting. Okay, you're saying. Okay, ten years from now, I want to be able to, you know, build that house or buy a house. Ten years, fifteen years from now, that's a long-term goal. Okay. But because you have that goal, what happens is it changes how you live your life or how you spend daily okay doesn't mean that you have to live life in fear doesn't mean that you don't you have to live in a way that you know you're uh, i mean you're not taking care of yourself or your needs or anything like that but your thinking changes because of your long term goals right and there are people who are you know who set long term goals who said okay, i'm going to buy this place i'm going to buy that thing and and sometimes we think it's worldly what is this? You know, very worldly. No, it's just when you look at Proverbs, it's full of wisdom, right? Uh, and it, in fact, it's saying, go consider, look at the ant, look at how the all these animals, how they function, and learn. Why should we learn so that we can use that in our own lives, right? So, so it's not worldly. It's not worldly to think like that. It's not worldly to say, okay, I need to think ahead. I need to do this. What is worldly is. When we put, you know, when we put uh, confidence or when we boast about certain things that we want to do in our arrogance and pride, and not include God in our planning, now that is worldly. Okay, that is that is worldly because we are not included God, and and the Holy Spirit is able to lead us. Can the Holy Spirit lead you to plan in such a way that you, you know, own something twenty years from now? What do you think? Or is, is God going to say only, you know, all that you have, you have to use it either to, you know, uh, give to poor or you need to give it to the church? Do you think? What do you think? Can the Holy Spirit ask you, lead you to, let's say, buy a property, a land or a house for yourself? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because you we've studied we've studied about the heart of God, right? It could be a blessing to you. It could be a blessing to the future generation, your children, their children, whatever. It could be a blessing. Maybe the Lord wants to use that as a place of ministry. It could be a blessing, right? So don't think that hey, it is worldly. I will never think like that. No, I'm just going to live for the day, live for the moment, use whatever I have for the moment. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Forget about it. No, no, no. Right? 
God will lead us. You know, there is planning and foresight, and God will lead us. You know. So where you are right now, like when I'm, I'm talking financially, okay, you might be saying, I don't have enough money. I don't even have a bank account. No, I don't have this. I don't have that. Maybe you're thinking like that. Okay. But where you are financially is not where God will you know, take you or lead you five years from now, ten years from now. You know, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Okay, which verse is that? Hmm. He's able to do that. Right? So right now, what are we thinking? I cannot. How, how can I own that? How can I live in such a place? How can I even have a vehicle? You know, so many things. We say, I cannot, I cannot. Right? But the God is able to do above what you think. Right? He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we ask or even think. He's able to do that. So, so don't discount yourself. Don't discount God. Right? And he's, he does that for a purpose so that we can be channels of blessing. He does that for a purpose because he takes delight in prospering, increasing, and bringing success into the lives of his servants. He takes he takes pleasure in that, right? Like if you ask any earthly father, you know, any earthly father will take pleasure in the prosperity of his children, you know, unless there is one serious issues or you know, challenges. They will take pleasure, saying, right, "I want my children to do more. I want my children to have more than what I have." So how much more our heavenly father? Okay. So set long-term goals. It's not sin, right? Um, believe that God owns it all. Now it's a very important thing. Psalm 24 talks about that. 24:1 says that um, you know the earth is the Lord's and the fullness. Right? Uh, let's just look at this. The earth is the Lord and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Okay, that means that he is the creator, he possesses everything, it belongs to him. Right? So when we when we when you believe that hey, it belongs to God, then we will be good stewards of what he brings into our lives. We will handle it well, we will use it well. Okay? And pride won't take control of us. Right? So we will handle money, money will not handle us. Money will not take a hold of us. Why? You realize, hey, all that I have, it comes from God. It comes from Him, right? And I'm going to use it. Well, He doesn't, uh, you know, hold me back from. I don't have to hold back from using on my needs. But then I'm going to be ready to use it for His plans and purposes, right? And so, God is able to do that. Uh, we need to understand that it belongs to Him. Okay. Okay. The fourth one about put uh, is about goals okay so which means that uh, when you say goals you know we just looked at it just now long term goals short term goals financially a goal is what it's an objective something that you want to achieve something want there you want to reach in the future right so when you say goal you must always you know think in terms of okay how much or what is it describe it what is the goal right and it also should have time attached to it okay so when you say you know i want to okay i want to um, become a pastor or i want to become okay, that's a goal right but also prayerfully you need to consider by when okay when is it when is it that you want to start and plant what is the God putting in your heart? Plant a church, or you know, what is God putting in your heart? Maybe the, yes, there is a time of season of preparation, and there is a season of commissioning, and, and we know that when it comes to planting churches, also there could be different seasons of preparation and and so on, right? But the thing is, it ha always has time attached to it. Okay, when we say time attached to it, we say okay, by when should I do it? Like a goal should have a time time frame. Right? So when you say, I want to financially, okay, I want to save so much or achieve so much, 
always put a time frame. Well, it could be shortened, it could be extended, but put a time frame, right? Goal. Okay. Lifestyle. To be a good steward of God's, uh, you know, wealth that He's putting in your hand, we need to consider our lifestyle. So, does the Bible talk about a certain kind of lifestyle? What do you think? Suppose you are sitting, uh, you know, in Bangalore. Okay, this is how a person should live. Meaning, you know, if a person is, um, you know, uh, living in a city, or if a certain a person is in ministry, the person is um, whatever some kind of profession. This is the lifestyle a believer should have. Yeah. So explicitly. The scripture explicitly does not tell anything in specific what to do and what not to do. But what we understand is God provides for our needs and not yeah. for our greed. Right. So needs, wants, greed, you know, different categories of, right? Um, so, but God gives principles. God lays down principles. You know, think about it. Let's say we go to, um, you know, um, I, 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 my grandparents, they grew up in a village in Tamil Nadu. Uh, right, and then the main road was just one road. That is the only road, main road. And um, um, if you have a car, it's like this person is rich. Any car, any four wheeler, because I think those days some two families owned cars. Two families. Okay, my grandfather was a doctor, uh, and uh, so he, he, uh, you know. Whatever it happened, is he had one one old ambassador. Anyone seen ambassador car? <laughs> right. I don't know if it's still in production, but uh, I think they stopped. Okay, Hindustan Motors ambassador. So he had one ambassador car. Then there was one more, um, like a politician, um, and his his house. You know, they had. What about telephone? Okay. All of us know this kind of phone, but do you know this phone? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have to dial the phone, right? So my grandfather did not have phone. Okay, in the house, there's this only this house had a phone. So whenever we needed to talk to someone, we had to go. He had to go to that house, book a call, trunk call. They used to call it, right? So you call one number, you give your, you know, who you need to call and that operator will connect the call now you have to wait sometimes it could happen immediately or it could happen after five hours ten hours whichever you know the line has to be cleared because there are not too many lines and then so a trunk call you book a trunk call right long long distance call international calls forget it <laughs> you know it's <laughs> so so that is how it was so if you had a phone you're a big shot Oh, it's like he has a telephone in the house. TV, same thing, right? And I remember my grandfather had one small, okay, black and white, Doordarshan only, <laughs> you know, with the antenna, one channel TV. Okay. So if there's any program, all the neighbors, everywhere, everybody will come into the house. Why? Because they want to watch that program, right? And they're all sitting there. And, and if there's a power cut, oh, everybody's very disappointed. No program today. We can't watch it. So that is how it is. That is how it was. Okay. Now you shift the whole scenario to maybe a city. Okay, and you see that almost everybody is driving in a car. You could see that okay, almost everybody has a television in their home. Okay. So relatively speaking, it's like you cannot say that, okay, this person is super rich, right? Or is the richest. So when you say lifestyle, that is also very relative, right? How much you're earning, where, how, how you want to spend, what are your needs, right? So the Bible does not say, okay, so that, that not, does not mean that, okay, if you're a pastor or if you're in ministry, then you should not have your own house. The Bible does not say that. 
right? Or so let's say you're in, oh, I, I'm in ministry. Uh, you know, how can I, how can I go by plane? You know, people are starving. No, that's not it. If you need to reach a place in one hour time or two hours time, and it's you know, if you go by bus or train, it's going to take two days. And if you need to be there, and if you can afford to spend for the ticket, well, you can do it, right? So you cannot say, you know, I'm in ministry, therefore, you know, I should not, or no kind, not that kind of reasoning, or what does the Bible say? No, I should live this way, I should be in poverty. No, right? So the Bible does not say that, okay, this is the lifestyle of this person. This is the lifestyle. No, there are principles. Guiding principles, right, and and that's how that is what it is, right? It, you decide, and the same way you cannot compare, right? You cannot compare and say, okay, that person, this person, you know, uh, all the doctors are living like that. I'm also a doctor. All the you know ministers or pastors are living like that. So I should also no, no, no comparison, right? No comparison. You don't have to compare and live up to the other person. Or the other neighbor, no. You decide. You decide. God has given some wealth, or you know, you decide. The Bible is there. The Holy Spirit, you know, He will lead. Okay. Um, so live within the means. Okay. I'm not going through all the scriptures there. You can read through it, but we'll just look at one, which is um, uh, Matthew 25. Okay, um, Matthew 25, 20, we, we saw this okay, uh, earlier also when we considered stewardship. Uh, the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Okay? He's specifically talking about money, which was entrusted to this person and how that person used that money. Okay, so that can be our guiding principle. Okay, God has given it. We need to be faithful with it. And how faithful am I with whatever has been given? So these are guiding principles. Okay. okay we won't go through all the other scriptures. You can, you know, please um, go through it. Okay, borrowing and debt, we, we looked at it. Um well, small question. Okay. Yeah, please um please go ahead. Yeah. So in the biblical time, uh, are there any examples of people who have actually been in debt? I, I, I recollect uh, that uh, widow yeah. uh, where Elisha yeah. actually, you know, told her to sell off the thing. Because sometimes uh, uh, getting into a trap of debt doesn't happen overnight. It yes. happens by yeah, uh, it can op op chances. Happen, yeah, but it can happen overnight also. Huh? It can happen overnight can also. Happen. You know, okay. like uh, suppose there's a crisis. Uh -huh. Like hospitalization, something okay. you know, you see that um, sometimes the whole scenario changes. Or you know, during the COVID time, we saw that the only person earning member in the family passes okay. away, oh. and then the whole thing changes, right? Yeah. So. So in uh, this scenario, any other example that comes to our mind when we look at it? And my question primarily is like yeah. you know, sometimes it is not by. Uh, choices alone it also happens by chance True. like a job layoff i'm talking about myself so a job layoff and yeah. commitments are a different level right and at that time the job goes yeah and trying to come out of debt i've got into more debt. more debt so it's just like a cycle yeah and as you say obviously it takes a lot of mind space which yeah. doesn't give the liberty to you know breathe through mm. all other areas including spiritually or family yeah. or finances because of the last statement on the notes it says you know one of the keys for financial freedom is being totally out of debt yeah so how does really one go about it faster yeah so so the thing is to um, see people get into debts for very reason very uh, different reason like when i was working there was one guy who was a he was a bachelor we were all bachelors working and uh, he at the end of the month, invariably would ask for money. Okay, last uh, day of the month, maybe 29th, 30th, he will invariably ask for money. And uh, the thing, oh yeah, so I was married, he was single. So then, uh, you know, I would ask, you know, what is it? One month, 
two months, okay, I gave him, you know, you say, can I give 500,000? Give. Then I realized that he had this habit of drinking. Okay. So his this 500,000 was not for uh, any bills that he had to pay, but he would use that for drinking. Right. So he was getting into debt oh, I, with different people. Right? I owe this person 500,000, you know. And I think he would have probably, you know, every month he was collecting, accumulating debt of maybe 10,000, even more because of this. So that is one scenario. And like you rightly said, you know, if there is a crisis, right, there's a crisis, um, like maybe somebody losing their job, somebody is laid over, the company closes down, um, you know, all those scenarios, we because we need to, let's say we've taken a loan, we've, you know, we bought a house, vehicle, um, and we need to pay back, right? And because of that, we take a loan from somewhere else and then finish this loan. But then now interest is accumulating on both sides. So, so th those kind of things are there. So, so the thing is, when we get into such a situation, right, we need to think, okay, what, what are the assets that I have? How can I change my life now? Right? We need to take a hard look. Yes, our style of living has to come down, has to change. Well, that's the thing. OK, I used to do this you know, uh, uh, maybe three, four times in a month, every once a week. You know, we used to go out and eat and all that. No, change that. Because this is a season. We need to get through the season. And accordingly, my lifestyle should change. And if you're a family man, family person, then we need to have the chat with the family saying, hey, guys. We need to, you know, we need to make some adjustments here. Okay, we're not going to be able to afford that holiday that we used to go, you know, twice a year, or you know, we need to, we need to make some changes. Then we need to make a list. What are the assets that I have? Vehicle, gadgets. What are the assets that I have? Because I need to pay back this debt. Um, maybe jewelry, land, whatever. What is it that I can let go of? You know, sometimes it could be even PF or you know something that's your provident fund or something that you accumulated. Yes, we kept it in good faith, saying, "Okay, I'll use it for a future, you know, for something." And it was maybe a big dream, I'll, you know, someone's wedding, a family member's wedding, whatever education. But right now, we need to get over that debt because it's it's rising high, right? And uh, so we need to make a list of that, and also. You know, there are people, good believers, um, who are consultants, who um, you know, who have, who are wise in this, right, in this field, and who can actually suggest various options, safe, ethical options, right. Um, it is going to be painful, but they can help walk through that path of recovery, uh, of you know, our recovery of whatever situation we are in, we can help do that. So that we don't make further mistakes in our anxiety in doing uh, something. You know, To get over one mistake, we probably get into some five different things, which again, you know, I was just earlier talking about all these loans, uh, all these app-based app you know, uh, things that you can take loans. And people are getting stuck I'm, over and over again. I'm hearing about, you know, even just last week, there's just three cases sorry a lot of yeah a lot of scams and a lot of very e easily you know it's, it, it's not big money it's like 20000 25000 30000 but you have like 10 apps like that and you take you know 25000 from each app that's it right you're already paying huge interest and if you default on a payment then the interest doubles and you know people are and they when they send People to recover money, uh, they are tough people. They don't listen to reason. They're willing to take away everything that you have, right? So, so you lose a lot of peace of mind, etc. But yeah, so the thing is, yeah, can I? In what situations can I borrow? Again, there's no hard and fast thing. Maybe you know, borrow in the sense you're using your credit card to make an online payment. Maybe you're buying a ticket, or you you know you're using something, but Use it in a way that, uh, you know, uh, not for me, you know, use it in a way that you know that you can actually repay. You know, every loan, 
people take they take it with that good faith right you know that tomorrow i'll be able to repay uh, but there are people who who take saying i'm going to take it now i'm not going to, i'm not even thinking of repaying now that's a dangerous mindset right so borrowing and debt um, we need to be careful okay um if you're a married person you know cons consult discuss with one another if one person is not in agreement then it's better to stay away right um so so that's the that's the thing um yeah any questions any further questions on this okay so, sorry uh, just uh, Biblically, there's no other example that we can relate to. Sorry history. about that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, except uh, Elisha and. Uh, yeah, so that is one thing that comes to my mind also. Um, because uh, the other thing is like where Jesus uh, casted a miracle for the to pay the taxes. To pay off the tax, but, yes. Um, I I, even I can't recall anything. Yeah, no? but uh, numerous verses. Uh, I mean, a lot of verses in Pro Proverbs which talk about uh, you know don't stand in surety for someone who's borrowing wisdom uh, yeah a lot of wisdom a lot of principles about debt and everything is warning you know everything is warning saying that do not get into a such a situation right so that's the thing so yeah I can't recall right now any any other situation. Yeah. But at times it also hinders ministry also, no? If the mind is really clogged with all of these issues. Yeah. So, so let's say a church, you know, as a trust or something, takes a loan to buy something. Okay. Now, every month, their focus is I need to pay back. So offering time is something that they they cannot miss, right? They cannot miss on a Sunday offering time emphasis then all these suppose the offering dips or people maybe people are not attending for some reason then we use like one tends to use other means to hold the people to make sure that they give the offering so we get into other modes of manipulation putting fear in people's lives saying that you know then every sunday one mini message on giving Right, a lot of pressure, emotional pressure. You need to give. What are you doing, etc. You know, give sacrificially, give till you, whatever. You know, so all these methods come into play, and then, like you said, yeah, it hinders ministry. Right? Maybe God, maybe God wants you as a ministry to give. But you're saying no, I cannot. You know, I have this loan. I need to, um, you know, fulfill that, repay that. Right? So, yeah. So, so yeah. So, if you know, if if you're maybe here and or online class, and you have, a, you are in debt. Okay, so you can you can think about. Okay, you don't you don't have to lose hope. You, know? you don't have to panic, right? Um, you can get help. There are people who can give financial advice, chartered accountants, believers, who. Um, you know, who lived that life. They're not talking theory, who have lived out of experience. And and so they're more than willing to, but we need to be transparent. They're more than willing to help. So they will ask tough questions like, um, you know, how much are you, what is your income? <clears throat> so and so, such and such an amount. Okay, what is your spending? Now you, you'll feel, you know, why should I tell this person where I'm? No, you need to, right? Like um, this quite recently, one person whom I knew, said you know because of this i'm in debt can you help okay people help and all that then that situation didn't change you know always some kind of a problem financially um, and all the while the problem pointed out was you know because i stood in the gap as a surety for another person i'm in this problem so i guided them to a person who could help you know, give financial wisdom and advice a, a, a couple. So then, I re, I find out that that is not that is one of the problems. There are many other problems. But praise God, you know, this person was open enough, transparent enough to say, yes, this is how the problem started. All these loans, various things, all these expenses, and and so they realize that there is a pattern of spending. 
right? There is a mindset when it comes to money. There is a mindset. It, it maybe it, it could be things like, what will the other person say? Simple thought. Okay. Have you ever thought like that? I'm sure all of us have. What will the other person say? Now, if it's about money or spending of money, okay, what will the other person say? You know, if I invite them home and I serve this food, what will the other person say if you know I'm a you know at this age and I should be living this kind of life, I should be driving this kind of vehicle? What will the other person say? So if that person has that mindset. That's a dangerous thing. So it's not about how much money they are earning. It's about this. It's about this thinking. It's about the stronghold. So they were able to help in that. You don't need to do that. You don't need to order food from Swiggy and Zomato every other day. You can very well manage. You know, they need. They suggested all that. They went to that level, right? And so there is help available to walk out of debt, but one needs to be transparent and teachable. It's saying, okay, I'm willing. It's a very humbling experience, right? Uh, but one can walk through that. Okay. Okay. This whole, uh, se the seventh one is about bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, you know, it's, it's more of a, I think it's a Western thing where, uh, or maybe it's uh, in India also, where the business, you know, own or takes on a lot of loan in order to consider, uh, in order to, you know, do business. Takes on a loan. Uh, maybe it could be a person. It could be, uh, you know, a, an enterprise, an organization. But they declare bankruptcy, meaning that business is not working, or I'm at a place. So they declare bankruptcy, which means that, um, you know, they don't have to pay back, right? So. Uh, I'm, I don't know how the situation is. Uh, I mean, all the, um, you know, this kind of a thing happens. Yeah, they, so it means that they cannot, they don't have to pay back. Okay? So, what is the thing? Can I declare bankruptcy and then just make sure that all my whatever I owe is cleared, cleared off or written off, right? Or should I actually make an effort to repay? Oh, that's the question here, right? So you know, certain certain cases, yes, we can. You know, one need one declares bankruptcy, but when you declare, you also know that your um, reputation, okay, as a business person, your reputation, your credit worthiness, it changes, right? When you declare bankruptcy, which means no other bank will readily give something. Right, or um, you know, when you're when maybe you want to start a business and you want capital, and uh, no other bank will give when you declare bankruptcy. So you need to be careful about that. And also, you know, what about those people to whom you owe money? Maybe it could be vendors, maybe it could be customers, right? Um, so think about that. Right, um, as far as possible, you know, let there be a, you know, what we would call as an equitable treatment. Right. Uh, let there be a righteous treatment or settlement for all who to whom we owe money. Right? Okay. Um, next is about giving. I think we looked at that, right? Giving, we looked at tithes, we looked at um, the offerings, we looked at arms, which means ALMS, arms, which is uh, you know giving to the poor. So I won't go into that. Um, Okay. Investments. Okay. So it is. Is it sinful to invest? Okay. As a believer, as a minister of God, uh, as a child of God, is it okay to invest? What does What does that mean? Invest. You're taking your money, and you're putting it somewhere. Maybe investing in a business or investing in some kind of a policy, right? So that you will get a return. Okay. So what is the simplest way of Investing. I don't think you can even call it investing. What is the simplest way where you get a return on your money? Fixed deposits. Eight instruments of like fixed deposit, recurring deposit. Fixed like deposits. Basic... Yeah, or your simple savings account. account. Right? Uh, there, there, there is a interest that you earn. Right? So that is, you can't call it investment, but you know, this is what. But when you talk about fixed deposits 
or when you talk about um, recurring deposits the, sorry uh, risk taking appetite is very low mm. so, so it is more long term and there is less risk right um, when we say less risk which means um, less chances of things going bad okay so those are some things to consider so you know what what are other ways i'm not an expert financial expert but what are other ways by which we can invest something called mutual funds right uh, sorry stock market high risk high return okay so uh, so I, I, one needs to know one needs to be knowledgeable and uh, we need to study and then do it right there's a high risk there's a chance that you invest and then everything goes down right it depends on so many things depends on the political uh, climate depends on the industry right depends on how globally things are functioning suppose there is a war that's all you know just because there's no supply that's what happened right ukraine russia and prices shot up for fuel because the supply stopped and so on right so uh, so those kind of things are so we need to understand that but yes it is a high risk but also high return okay investment can also be in land right on and assets like that uh, real estate uh, where uh, again we know land value always appreciates right so um, maybe in gold right uh, so those are some some ways of investing right which you can consider okay so there are several options and um, probably i'll i'll just share you know a, a document on simple ways of investing but also you know uh, if you're listening and if you're from another country and and so on um you know you you see what works in your nation in your country um and also if you're from another state in in india also you know you see you see what works there and then you can invest okay is it okay to invest in chit funds chit funds you know those what do you think because one chit fund is uh, suddenly that office is open yeah <laughs> it is not safe uh, pass it's a wrong investment i'm sorry it's a wrong investment i mean it's a risky investment risky yes yeah so it's a risky thing because if somebody defaults or um you know there's so many organizations which which are there open up office start get the investment and then shut office and you don't hear about them right so yeah so there are some well reputed organizations but there are others you know who of uh, we don't know you know so we need to be careful okay okay so investments consider that okay it's not sin to invest but at the same time when you also guard your heart right because why are you investing you want return so there's nothing sinful about that and in fact you must you must have that thing to 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 get back and to have a good return okay so in it in inverse here so but as far as you're not putting everything in one place so then that gets diversified so right so so that's that's the thing you know like when it comes to mutual funds that is what everything is uh, in different uh, mutual funds do that right? they put it in different debt instruments so that even if one is they do put in st stocks and shares but then if even if one pulls down the other one is able to balance it so yeah so that should be the right okay we'll stop here uh, we are going to look at how many more uh, there's work and retirement net worth income taxes life insurance wealth transfer training children okay so we will um, finish this in the next class and um, and with that we'll come to the end of this course okay so okay thank you so much God bless.